Praise the Lord. Thank God for yet another opportunity to share his word. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank God for your presence tonight. I thank God for yet another opportunity to share his word. You know, it's his word that will encourage us. It's his word that will keep us. It's his word that will allow us to continue to grow in the grace and the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of who God is. And so uh, tonight's uh, Bible title lesson is It's What I Know. And I say that because in this walk of life, it's all about what we know. It's how we're going to uh, respond to uh, various situations that take place in our lives. And so it's all about what we know. Uh, if you ever had a bad dream and you wake up from that dream and you wake up and you're at, uh, uh, in a safe place. And, and so now you know that it was just a dream. And so the way you look at that dream now, the way you approach that dream is what you know about the dream that you had. The way you see the dream now, you wake up and you say, oh my, I'm still in my in my home. I, I still have food. I still have clothing. I, you know, I'm still protected. I'm still in his arms. So it's all about what you know. And it's the same way in our walk of life. It's all about what we know about God is how we will handle uh, various situations. You know, when you think about uh, trouble in our spirits and how we overcome the trouble that's in our spirit. Again, it's all about what you and I know. Praise God. Father, I come this day to say thank you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you most of all for Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for your life-saving blood. Holy Spirit, I ask as I share that I'm sharing in a manner that will honor and glorify you as it blesses your people. I thank you again for the opportunities in the precious name of Jesus. I pray, amen and amen. Again, it's what I know. Again, it's what you know. You know, you ever had your child when they were young come to you and ask you certain questions and you look at that child and you say, okay, uh, based on their level of maturity, uh, the way I answer this is on a, on a, a need to know basis. You see what I'm saying? So in our walk of life, as we continue to grow, as we continue to mature, as we continue to be uh, bombarded with, 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 with spiritual warfare and all those different things. Now you need to know more. And so you need to be able to know more so that you can combat those different things that's going to come and, uh, you know, and possibly disrupt our lives. And when I talk about disrupting our lives, I'm talking about disrupting our lives from a, a spiritual, a physical, a mental, and also a financial perspective. And so if we can reference the word of God, when we're faced with those various trials again as it relates in the spiritual and the physical and the mental and the financially uh you know part of our lives praise god and and what we know about god's word will determine how we react to those different situations and so the first one i want to look at is, is is spiritually and so when you think about uh spiritually how sometimes things can come and be so disruptive things can come sometimes and just overwhelm you praise god i want you to think about god's word and the scripture that was given to me praise god uh, again when it seems like god is nowhere to be found when it seems like god is not in your presence when it seems like you're not experiencing his presence the first verse of scripture that i have to share with you tonight is jeremiah 29 I'll be sharing verses 12 and 13. The word of God reads from Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I read that to say we must trust in God's word because here we are spiritually struggling, spiritually overwhelmed, and we have so many, many different things that's going on. But Jeremiah 29 verse 12 says, then you will call upon me. You will go, you will pray to me, and I will listen to you. And this is God's word. God is saying when you are feeling like that spiritually, you need to uh, uh, come to him in prayer, go to him in prayer. And he says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. In other words, it can't be a half-hearted 
uh, kind of approach to God. It's got to be wholeheartedly. It's got to be uh, the entire being, the entire person. In other words, you know right now, spiritually, you're overwhelmed. So you need to seek God like you've never sought him before. The next verse of scripture I'd share in reference to spiritually would be Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. And it reads, it says, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. 14, who is the guarantee of our redemption, of the purchased possession, to the praise of his glory. And so when we look at this, what we have to do is we've got to trust that God's word is keeping us. God's word is able to hold us. God's word is able to sustain us. And so what you got to understand is here, he says, in him, you also trusted after you heard the word. Don't begin to doubt him. Continue to trust him. Begin to continue to hold fast to his word. And the reason you can do that is because you and I as born again believers, and you've heard me talk about this a number of times, we've been sealed. Praise God. Ephesians 10, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 11, we're still talking about from a spiritual perspective. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And when you think about the wiles of the devil, we're talking about the schemes, we're talking about the tricks, we're talking about all the different things that the devil will try to do to con us, to, to dupe us, to, to lure us in. But he says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, it's not in it in your strength. It's not in your might, but it's in his power. It's in his authority. And so, again, we put on the whole armor of God, again, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, to stand when the devil is trying to come against us. Praise God. And again, this is all the spiritual uh, perspective that I was speaking about. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, it reads, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And again, as I started this, I was talking about spiritually how sometimes you feel like God is not there. You feel like God has abandoned you. But what you've got to understand is the scripture says that we must be persuaded. We must understand it is absolutely positively nothing that could separate us from the love of God. It is says, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So now let's go to uh, word number two, physically. He says, um, I'm not doing well. So let's look at what the word of God has to say about that. And I think about, first of all, in Acts chapter nine, as the church was growing, praise God. And it speaks about how uh, uh, the men of God went about healing people. And I just want to read uh, from Acts 9, 23. It says, it speaks about a man who had been bedridden for eight years because he was paralyzed. But in Acts 9, 34, it says, and Peter said to him, Ananias, Jesus the Christ has healed you. And I, I read that first because what I want you to understand is a lot of times if we would seek God, uh, praise God and, and begin to believe and begin to walk in, because sometimes what we have to see is that the healing is already taking place, but we've not yet walked into it. We've not yet uh, accepted the fact that God is in fact who he says that he is. And so here, when I looked at as the church was growing, Acts chapter nine, verses 33 and 34, and it spoke about that bedridden uh, man who had been paralyzed, praise God. And it speaks about him being paralyzed for over eight years, praise God. But then he was healed. Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. And I read that because what I want you to understand is God is a God of healing. God is a God who knows how to take care of his people. God is a God who can, who has, and will continue 
to heal. And so when physically things are not going well, we still have to know and trust God's word. Remember, I said it's all about what we know. It's all about what we know will determine how we will respond. Praise God. Psalms 107, verse number 20. He sent his word and healed them. His word is still uh, uh, active. His word is still in our lives. His word is still about what we know about his word. But the scriptures say he sent his word and healed them. So I believe the word that has been sent, praise God, from almighty God is a word that's capable of taking care of us physically. Praise God. Isaiah 53, verse number five, it reads, it says, and by his stripes, we are healed. The mere fact that Jesus, praise God, bore the sins of the world, the stripes that being beaten, praise God, was representative of him taking on sicknesses, diseases, and all those different things. And the scripture says, by his stripes, we are healed. Again, it's all about what we know about God's word is what will determine how we react to those various situations that's taking place in our lives right now. James chapter five, verse number 16, it reads, it says, confess your trespasses one to another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayers of a righteous man avail it much. And so when you think about that, what you have to really understand is, is there's times the yes that we must confess our trespasses because there's times that we are uh, physically uh, down. We're physically uh, 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 out of it because of sin. And so there's times in order to, to receive the uh, physical healing that, that we need that's required for us to continue to go on, to move on. There's times that uh, sin must be confessed. Sin must be dealt with. But then the scripture says that after that sin is confessed and dealt with, it talks about the effective fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, there is power in prayer. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. Praise God. Now let's look at this again from the mental perspective. Um, I think about, as soon as I think about from a mental perspective, I think about how cloudy things may appear to be how even things can be so cloudy that it begins to affect our judgment. It begins to affect our walk of life. It begins to affect relationships and all those different things. And so the verse of scripture that was given to me uh, from the beginning is Isaiah 26, verse number three. And it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In other words, when we begin to look at this from a mental perspective, we've got to understand what we know about God's word. We have to understand what we trust about God's word. We have to understand what we believe about God's word. Because again, it's all about what you and I know is going to determine how you and I will respond. And so again, when we look at it from a mental perspective, Isaiah 26, verse number three you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. And so God's word is telling us that if we, regardless of what things may seem like, feel like, look like, regardless of those different things, we have still got to keep our focus on almighty God. We have still got to stay tuned in to God's word. Praise God. Isaiah 26, verse number 12, it reads, it says, Lord, you will establish peace for us, for you have done all wonderful works in us. So in other words, it's God's word who will and does establish the peace that we need. Praise God. So the next verse that I want to read as we look at it from a, a, a mental perspective is Philippians 4, verse number 8. It says, finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are pure, whatever things are just, whatever things appear, think on these things. And then it speaks about how the peace of God, praise God, that you can begin to experience. 
the problem is a lot of times is we have so many, many negative things that we allow to be there that that changes our focus. You know, I even think about people who uh, used to have nightmares and they would come and they would say, every time I go to sleep, I, I have a nightmare. Every time I go to sleep, I'm, I'm dreaming. I'm thinking about something that is just so crazy, something that sometimes it torments me. And I ask this question, I say, well, what is it uh, that you look at and or listen to prior to going to bed? What are the last things that you do before you lay down to go to sleep? And for some, some would say, well, I, I listen to this, I, I listen to that, or sometimes I might look at a, a, a scary movie. I might look at a movie that involves a lot of killing, that involves a lot of this, that involves a lot of that. And the, 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 the first thing that I would say to them is, stop looking at that kind of nonsense, especially prior to laying down, because the whole problem with that is, is those are the last things that you visualize. Those are the last things that you hear. And so naturally when you lay down, because those are the last things that you uh, you saw or you heard, you will begin to think on those things. You will begin to meditate on those things. And so as you begin to meditate on those things, those things will torment you. Those things will make you uh, have sleepless nights. Those things will make you toss and turn all night long. However, if you begin to change that, you listen to uh, 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 some nice uh, uh, soft gospel music, listen to something that's going to quiet and settle your spirit. Look at something that's going to be peaceful. Praise God. Make sure you pray to God before going to bed. If you want to do something, the last thing you want to see, see the word of God. Read the word of God. If it's hearing the word of God, whatever way that it needs to be, because again, those last things that you and I see or those last things, those last words that we hear will be those words, will be those things that will be at the forefront because that's where our focus had ended at. Our focus ended with either something very negative or it ended with something that was very positive. If it ends with something that's very positive, it would be much easier to lay down and have peace. But if you, uh, 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 prior to laying down, then it's just a very, very chaotic uh, type situation, then naturally your focus is only going to be on that chaotic situation. And so again, finally, brethren, praise God, as Paul was writing to the Philippian church, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, think on these things. True, praise God, noble, just, and here. They have to impact you. They have to allow you to begin to have uh, some peace in your spirit. Praise God. But you've got to just uh, uh, change, you know, the way you've been doing things. Like I say, um, a lot of that stuff that you look at, praise God, that stuff actually is designed to to impact your spirit. It's designed to, to make you think of feel and act some sort of a way you know it's just like some of the games that our children are playing and those games are, are games that has so much violence in them and what it begins to do is after a while the game is not enough for a child the game is not enough where he points one of those assault rifles a gun or whatever at another human being and kill them but see in the game and they see the blood, the gore, you see all of those different things. But after a while, those things begin to penetrate one's inner being. And after a while, again, the game is not enough. The game really doesn't give them that same type of adrenaline rush. So now what happens? Now you want to physically kill a human being. And so that's why we must be careful praise God with what we look at, what we hear, where we go, that even the different people that we deal with, because mentally they can have such a negative effect on you that it could impact your life forever. It could mean incarceration or possibly the cemetery. Praise God. 
the last word as we were looking at, praise God, is, is financially. You know, we start dealing with our money. We start dealing with all those different things. Today, we're so anxious. And yes, we do have to have a, a certain amount of money to to be able to survive in this world, to be able to pay our bills, to, to be able to just live, to eat, to sleep, all those different things. Yes, it is necessary to have money. The first verse of scripture, praise God, that, that I have to share with you comes from Philippians 4 and 19. And it reads, it says, and my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so when I look at this out of the abundant wealth that God has, he is more than capable of taking care of you and I. And when I say that, you know, so often we stress, we we worry about this, we worry about that. I even think about the scripture in Matthew chapter 6. It speaks about don't worry, therefore do not worry. Do not worry about what you're going to put on. Do not worry about what you're going to eat. The scripture speaks about God the Father is able, is capable of taking care of us. He's ca capable of taking care of you and I at any level, at any age, in any particular situation that may arise in our lives he is able and so again philippians 4 and 19 and my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus so it's all about being in the right relationship with jesus christ being in the family of god and god praise god knows how to take care of his own glory to god Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse number eight, it reads, it says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. In other words here, there is no shortcomings in God. God is able because of his grace, because of his mercy, because of who he is. And I say his abundant riches, praise God. You know, we always quote and talk about the scripture says God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. God owns everything. God, praise God, is can over control of everything. Glory to God. And so again, when we're troubled, when we're thinking about not being able to do this, not being able to do that. He says and he will supply your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Sometimes what happens is it goes beyond what we need and it winds up always being what we want. Praise God. But I even think about the scripture in the book of Psalms. The scripture says that that God will even give us the desires of our heart. Praise God. If we are in him, if we're living a life, praise God, based on being led by the spirit of God, he will even give us the desires of our heart. But again, you must understand it's all about according, according the word says to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I said it like this and I'll say it one more time. Because of God's abundant wealth, he is more than capable of taking care of each and every one of us from a financial perspective. Praise God. Glory to God. Here's a verse of scripture that we read and we read a lot. You hear it read uh, uh, most of the time when there's a, a death. But I want to read this today because I want you to understand who God is. Psalms 23, verse number one. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> very, very simple. The Lord is my shepherd. And as a shepherd, he knows how to take care of his sheep. He knows what his sheep needs. He knows how to give it to his sheep. He knows uh, 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 where to uh, out, the sheep should get what it is that they need from him. So he can take care of all of that. He is more than capable of doing so. So I want to repeat this verse of scripture one more time. Psalms 23, verse number one. 
the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now you can go and, and, and read the rest of that, but I wanted to, for the sake of looking at us, especially as we were dealing with this from a financial perspective, I want you to know that it's God who's doing the leading. If we would be led by the true shepherd, praise God, and truly be sheep. And the scripture says that the sheep know his voice, the sheep hear his voice, and they follow his voice. Another voice they do not follow. The problem is a lot of times we get messed up financially because we're listening to a different voice. What we must do, what we must begin to do is refocus and begin to listen to the voice of the shepherd. If we listen to the voice of the shepherd, we can complete the second part of this verse. First of all, the Lord is my shepherd. The second part is I shall not want. Praise God. Again, remember, it's what we know about God's word is what's going to determine how we react to various situations that may arise in our lives. And I spoke about looking at his word again and taking a very hard look at God's word as we look at the life that we're walking today from a spiritual, physical, mental, and financial perspective. Again, is what I know. Believe me, no matter what comes up with what you know about God's word is going to be the determining factor on how you will respond. Father, we thank you this day for your word. We thank you for the power that's in your word. We thank you for the peace that's in your word. We thank you for the joy that's in your word. We thank you for the love that's in your word. And Father, as your word has gone forth in power, might, and spirit, I want to say thank you for the healing, the deliverance. Most of all, thank you for setting us free. Father, yes, what we have been taught today is enough to combat the enemy when he comes to attack us spiritually, physically, mentally, and even financially. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Maybe today you've heard God's word and you say, I've been challenged on all those ends and I know now that the Lord is speaking to my heart. I know it's time for me to come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. So what do I do moving forward? How do I do that? I'm, I want to do it. I need to do it because I know God is calling me. What I would say to you, praise God, is to get uh, 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 right now in your heart, get it settled in your heart to know that one must confess with his mouth and believe in his heart that Jesus died and was raised from the dead and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. And so if you want to make that confession today and believe in Jesus Christ and allow him to come into your heart, repeat this prayer of faith with me. You say, Father God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. I believe that as he died for the sins of the world, he died for my sins. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, I have accepted you today as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for coming into my heart. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. It's in the precious name of Jesus I pray today. Amen and amen. And I say to you, welcome to the family of God. The word of God says that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your conversion. Right now, I'm rejoicing over your conversion. The first thing that I suggest that you do, get a Bible, begin reading. I suggest St. John chapter 1, begin reading and looking about, looking, excuse me, at the deity of Jesus Christ. And second, and I believe it's very, very important to your walk of life, 
is find that Bible-believing, teaching church and become an active member of God's family. Praise God. And so I say to the entire listening audience, I continue to ask the Lord's blessings on you and your family. May he continue to keep, him, keep you, excuse me, in his perfect peace. I love you. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.